week's episode of The Good Ram Show with me, Chris Goodrum. Um, right, okay, before we uh, kick off and look at some whiskey, uh, firstly, a big thank you to uh, a chap called Greg, who writes a blog called uh, gregswhiskeyguide.com. And um, Greg has, uh, I think it's the second year that he's uh, created a, a list of his top 10 favourite, um, what's the term, vlogger, video blogger? Uh, and um, although I wasn't number one, <laughs> I did get a, an honourable mention in dispatches, shall we say. So um, a big thank you to Greg for that. It's always always nice to uh, have somebody um, praise what you're doing. And um, yeah, uh, at the end of the day, uh, <laughs> I do it because I love doing it. And I hope you know you guys that sort of watch the show regularly sort of um, enjoy it. And um, second piece of news is that. Uh, uh, again, I've been asked to be a judge on this year's World Whiskey Awards and the Independent Bottlers Challenge, so uh, uh, that should be fun and will probably um, give me a few samples to uh, to share with you guys in uh, in due course, I imagine. And, um, ah, yes, uh, last bit of news is uh, we've got two tastings in the shop this month yes two we're cramming them in this month um so on the 24th we've got uh, a whiskey tasting um i think there's about four or five tickets remaining so if you haven't bought your ticket and uh, you know the format you know what it's all about so uh, get your tickets and um come and taste some great whiskey uh and then on the following week on the 31st was originally going to be a wine tasting evening but I won't bore you to death with the whys and the wherefores but we've turned it into a rum tasting so you want some good rum with good rum buy a ticket <coughs> we haven't actually started really pushing them yet so there's plenty of tickets still available for that but uh, again you know uh, there'll be a selection of, uh, of interesting rums different styles and what have you and we'll uh, we'll have a chat and a drink and uh, and a damn good night as they say um so yeah right that's so that's basically all the um notifications i suppose out of the way uh, as you can see from the title page of uh, today's episode it's north stars time again uh, series six has now been released and i i've had samples for a little while um and now i can officially do an episode of the show and um as you guys probably well know that not certainly those of you who watch the show regularly uh will know that um north star episodes do tend to become somewhat um epic in nature um so this time i've decided uh instead of trying to cram them all into one show i'm going to do two episodes of the show on them uh, this week i'm going to look at the uh, single cask bottlings that ian has produced and next week i will look at his uh, regional malts that he's bottled um under the um, regional star so highland star island star etc etc and uh, i thought it would just be a, a better way of doing it and um you know i can obviously sort of I won't have to rush basically to try and get to the end before you know um, it gets uh, too too long time wise. So so yeah, basically as you can see, four um, samples today. Yes, four. It's been a long time since I've done that few. I mean, there was a fifth in the lineup, um, but uh, Ian didn't send me a sample, and it was only sherry cast Tobermory, so it's not the not the end of the world that I didn't taste it, and um, obviously not. Having tasted it, I can't comment on whether it was a um, uh, <laughs> or not. Um, and uh, but obviously, uh, <laughs> uh, I, I trust the judgment that, it, that, it, that it was it was okay. It probably was just a, a big sherry monster. But anyway, um, like I said, can't really comment on something I've not actually tasted. But obviously, I have tasted these, so I should indeed comment on them. So let's have a look at today's. <laughs> Okay, so we're going to kick off with 28-year-old Bladnock. Yes, we start with a 28-year-old. Uh, not often I start... Well, actually, it, is actually, uh, it appears to be that more often than not I seem to be starting with ridiculously old whiskies. There is uh, a good reason for why I've started with probably... Well, not quite the oldest, but uh, certainly the uh, the second oldest in uh, the release. So this is a Bladnock, uh, distilled in January of 1990, bottled in September of this year from a bourbon barrel at 51.1%. Now, 
Um, there'll probably be a few raised eyebrows because uh, I haven't seen a, a privately bottled uh, Bladnock um, for a number of years now, certainly not since um, the Australian guy, whose name alludes me, bought the, uh, bought the distillery. And um, yeah, okay, so bottlings of Bladnock have been variable over the years, but I've always been a big fan of the distillery. I was always a big fan of, uh, of the Raymond era of the distillery, uh, as you well know. And um, yeah, Raymond bottled some, some absolutely gorgeous casks of Bladnock, it has to be said. There were a few, shall we say, that were probably less than gorgeous. And I don't know if any of you can remember this particular baby, the Brownie of Bladnock. I mean, look at the colour of that. It is the colour of pond water shall we say and yeah it tasted like that so, I mean those of you with long, long memories can probably remember the reason why this was bottled this was a selection of casks that Raymond bought without actually ever tasting it and then thought Jesus I need to bottle this but look at the bloody colour on that I mean it is pond water but anyway um, it was an intriguing one it's in the collection because damn I don't want to drink it um, no, uh, yeah, well, yes, that is the reason why it's in the collection. Uh, <laughs> I have had the misfortune to taste it. But anyway, we're not talking about the the, the, uh, the brownie of Bladnock. We're talking about, uh, obviously, this Bladnock. And, uh, um, well, I'll, I'll tell you about it when I get to taste it. Um, second bottling we'll be looking at is the oldest bottling in the Series 6 range. This is a 36-year-old Milton Duff, uh, distilled in December of 1981. Again, bottled in September of this year at 53.8 from a Bourbon Hoggy. And then we're going to get a bit younger. So this is uh, a 10 year old uh, Glen Talkers, uh, distilled in March of 2008, uh, bottled at 57.5%, uh, originally matured in a Bourbon Hoggy and finished in an X red wine cask. And when I first tasted this, I mean, obviously, I'll, when we get to the tasting, I'll explain more. Uh, the, the, I, I was convinced I knew what the red wine cask was, so I sent Ian an email saying, is it from an X cask? And he replied, yes. And I was just thinking, damn, I'm good. <laughs> um, anyway, no, that just basically from working in the wine trade, obviously. And the last bottle I'm going to be looking at is uh, a nine-year-old Heaven Hill. This has uh, been distilled in... Um, uh, September of 2009, again bottled in 2018, uh, originally residing in a Bourbon barrel before finished in an ex Ardbeg cask. Uh, uh, now originally I thought it was uh, an ex Colila cask, because certainly that's what uh, Ian had written on the uh, the price list, um, but no it's an Ardbeg cask and I did have a check the, uh, the sample label and it just says, I don't know if you can actually see that, but it just says finished in an Isla cask. So um, Anyway, it doesn't really matter which one the cask it is, does it, at the end of the day? It, it's, uh, it's an big one. So, there you go. That's this week's uh, lineup, and it's short and sweet to a certain extent. So, let's kick off with, uh, with a bit of bladders then, shall we? Okay, let's see what the nose gives us on this end, shall we? That is a lovely nose. Elegant, delicate plenty of sort of um, straw uh, notes, straw like barley, touch of apricot, it's a little high toned it has to be said, I mean the, the alcohol is, is, I think this is bottled, I think this has been left a little bit too much longer, the alcohol would have started to sort of um, impinge should we say, there's a, there's a touch of coffee, there's some lovely mature fruit, it's not not particularly tropical it's probably slightly more to the sort of the woody end of the mature um, oxidized fruit kind of character but there's some there's some lovely white fruits there's a, a little bit of almost kind of apple blossom um, and a, just a touch of vanilla um, I mean that is singing that is absolutely gorgeous that is I mean it's maybe not uh, you know, I, I, no, I'm gonna gonna stick my neck out and say this is this is almost classic old Bladnock. I mean, I've had, I mean, the certainly the style of it sort of changed a little bit. Obviously, as you well remember, when uh, Raymond took over the distillery, but obviously um, 
this predates uh, his uh, his time when it was more kind of classically grassy and citric when it was younger. Um, but this has stood the time really, really well, I think. And uh, yeah, it's got a got a lovely character. Let's see what the parts are. Like. That is a lovely palette. The alcohol is a little bit noticeable, but I think it's relatively well contained. Nicely honeyed, quite robust and full. Still, it's got that little bit of dried grass, some barley, apricot, peach, yeah, sort of white peach, pear, um, but loads and loads of barley. It gets a little bit coffeed on the finish. The tannins do start to come in a little bit. Um, and they are a little bit grippy and there is a little bit of alcohol um, but I think that is absolutely superb I mean I would have no issue with selling that whatsoever absolutely gorgeous and um, it's been a long long time since I've had a, a really really good blad knot but certainly I think uh, I think Ian's dig, dug out a pretty good one and I think that bottle's just about right I think if that had been le left a few more years I think the that the alcohol would have started to sort of well, it would have probably hit, fallen uh, a bit too far, but I think the alcohol would have still sort of poked through a little bit too much. But uh, I think, on on the whole, I think that was really, really well done. Right, let's move on to the 36-year-old Milton Duff. Let's see what most give us on this. Oh, that is lovely. Um, that is... Dusty, loads of dusty American oak, mature, starting to verge into the tropical uh, kind of character, but it's not a, a sort of a huge tropical monster. Um, what I love about it is its vibrancy and its its heathery kind of um, herbally kind of character. I mean, that's kind of classic sort of um, Milton Duff, really. Um, I mean, it's got a lovely maturity and a lovely vibrancy. There's plenty of mature barley there's you know some some, some lovely dusty oak vanillin um, but it's not too OTT it's all again really really well balanced a little bit of toffee possibly just starting to come through um, but the, the, the vibrancy of this at 36 you know is is astonishing really um, and just goes to show that some some whiskies really do age amazingly well and this and this isn't just one of them let's see what the palette's like oh whoa what a finish it does kick off a little bit oaky, so you're getting a little, a little bit of the sort of like butter, toffee, vanilla, and then you get this explosion of mature, slightly tropical fruit on the mid palate, sort of apricot, touch of kiwi, heather, um, a little bit of lime, apple, and then, oh, that sawdusty, mature American oak on the finish. It's just absolutely luscious and all wrapped up in this kind of lovely sort of light honeyed kind of character a sort of almost kind of runny honey um and but it's not overly sweet and i think the alcohol kind of really really balances that up quite nicely um and gives it a bit of a, a bit of a bite on the finish it does bring out a little bit of spice and a little bit of citrus and you know oh, that's fabulous that is absolutely stunning whiskey it has to be said and um, mm, you really should buy that. that. If you love old whiskey, that is just oh. Right, okay, let's move on to the 10 year old Glen Talkers. Let's see what the nose gives us on this end, shall we? Ripe, fruity, high toned, cherry, 
could only say Beaujolais to me and it is indeed an ex-Beaujolais barrique that finished it. Um, got a lovely sweetness to it, um, sort of cherry and almost kind of raspberry jelly. Um, but, and you're thinking, well, well all, all he's going on about is the finishing cask. It is not one dimensional. It has that kind of classic Glen Talker's kind of minerally hard kind of character just beneath it. And it's kind of, it works really, really well. There's a touch of barley as well. Bit, a, bit, a little bit summery, possibly. Um, touch of vanilla and a little bit of dried straw kind of coming through now I mean that's that's a lovely lovely nose it's I can't remember what um, what the, uh, the the retail price of that is but you know that is that is just absolutely gorgeous um, and yes like I said it's got it's got a lot of the finishing cask and and that finishing cask is like I said very very to me very obvious um, but but the balance and, and it's a lovely colour as well. Nice kind of like sort of pinky colour. It sort of almost reminds me of um, the uh, the Brocladi flirtation from a number of years ago, which some of you may well remember. Um, see what the palette's like. Quite tannic, grippy, chewy, malty, again, less of the, the, the sort of Beaujolais red fruits, cherries, that kind of thing. It's a lot tighter, it's a lot woodier, like I said, a lot maltier, bigger. A little bit of cereal, raw cereal on, on the finish. Um, you can tell that's a young whiskey and it's pretty tight. I mean, I, I deliberately left a little bit just to put a drop of water with it. Um, because I think it probably needs it. I mean, it's got a lovely aftertaste. The kind, of, the cherry fruits kind of come back uh, on the finish with a with a, a slight sort of syrupy note. Um, but again, the, that cask strength uh, alcohol really does kind of dry and balance and stops it becoming OTT sweet wise. Um, and that's always the issue with with cask strength whiskies that have been wine cask finished that have that kind of overt sweetness sometimes you dissipate the alcohol and it just allows all that sweetness to kind of come out so with a drop of water you get I'm getting a little bit more barley character now a little bit more of the the spirit character and a bit less of the um, the finish although you can still feel it just in the background that sort of like I said um, red cherry note has gone a bit sweeter but more kind of granulated sugar sweetness rather than sort of syrup sweetness um, so it's still got a bit of a bit of an edge to it and, and certainly the minerality of the of the spirit is certainly coming through now um, and again that's that is a lovely nose really well balanced let's see let's see what the palette's like now There was a little bit more emphasis on the on the, on the sort of syrup sweetness, it has to be said, because the alcohol has now kind of like dropped off a bit and it's not quite so sort of balancing. But I still think that's a lovely whiskey. Uh, and again, that sort of syrup sweet sort of cherry kind of character is coming through right on the finish. It kind of kicks off now more with the barley and the minerality. I'm certainly not getting quite a sort of a, uh, the the raw cereal note that uh, I got when it was uh, um, when it was neat. I mean, it's not hugely complex, but I love that. I think that's that's really enjoyable. Uh, and like I said, I think that's that, that that's a whiskey that uh, you know you ought to buy. Why are you 
Right, okay, so let's move on to the Heaven Hill. Now, I know there's been quite a bit of a bit of chatter about this particular bottling on um, on uh, social media, and, and it's, it's interesting. And, uh, uh, this is one of the things I love about what Ian's doing. He is trying to do some slightly different things. I mean, you, you may well remember the... Uh, the, the, the that the Montia uh, sherry finished in um, ex Isla casks, and uh, you know, hats off. You know, why not? Let's uh, let's try and play around with these kind of things. So let's uh, see what the nose gives us. That is nice. That's kind of quite toasty and bourbony, with a real intense peatiness, a sort of dried wood um, and burnt wood peat. A little bit of barbecue sauce and then the sweet corn starts to come out and I'm getting a little bit of a little bit of herbal rind some sweet American oak it certainly does kind of like evolve in the glass um, I love that balance of sort of sweet corn kind of character with with the with the smoke uh, and the, the peatiness um, I just think it works really well. I mean, certainly I remember the, the, the High West Campfire, which we still stock, which I still, still think is a, is a, is a fabulous uh, whiskey, although it is a blend of rye and um, peated Scottish malt. I just kind of love the sort of, the, 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 sort of the, 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 the intermingling of the, the two characters. Um, it's got a... And, and it, you can smell the alcohol, but... To, you know that is really really well contained I mean considering this is pushing 60% you know it it really holds that alcohol really really well um, and yeah nice nice and sweetness sweet smoky peaty barbecuey mmm see what it smells like Now I might have a cast iron palate, it has to be said, but that does not taste nearly 60%. I mean it is just so so harmonious, so well contained and um, yeah alright you get a bit, of a bit of an alcohol nip on the finish, not a surprise, and it's a bit drying and it's a bit spicy, but again the balance is really good with, you know, you've got plenty of that sort of sweet corn and, and, and sweet vanilla oak dusty peat smoke, a little bit of burnt wood, um, touch of herbal rye kind of coming through on the uh, on the finish uh, along with the spice and the smoke a really chewy, really kind of that gritty, chewy, smoky kind of oh, that is just, that's just fun at the end of the day, that is just sort of like oh my god I love this I'm going to put a little drop of water with it um, I managed to save a little bit, um, but to be perfectly honest with you, I don't really think you need to bother putting water with it. To be honest with you, I mean, I, I, I mean, I'm not going to say what I think. I, I know what happens to this, but I will. Uh, I will go through the. Um, yeah, I mean, it, but basically, the, the peat notes drop off, um, and it's kind of more classically sort of Heaven Hill now. It's more. It's more corn fat, um, but you know there's. There's still a little bit of a sort of like a, an astringent note in the background, which kind of is it, it, really intriguing. But you certainly got more of the of the bourbon character um, and the sweet oak. But you know, still really very very nice. And again, the palate follows a very similar course. It actually tastes a lot younger now. I'm getting a little bit of that kind of rose petally kind of youthful spirit character. Um, nowhere near as fun, really, once you put a little drop of water with it. Um, I mean, you know, it's amazing. I mean, I was tasting um, a uh, another whiskey of the same ABV, roughly about the same age. Uh, it was um, a... Uh, 
uh, Carnmore celebration of the cask Pulteney bottled at 59.5% and that alcohol just kind of whacked you around the head it was just like you know this is just incredibly civilized for, for something of that kind of ABV and um, it makes it a bit simpler a little bit more homogenous when when you put a little drop of water with it so I would just basically say just don't don't bother sticking water with it at all just just enjoy it neat because it's it's just absolutely gorgeous don't let me die. Right, okay, so let's sum today's episode of the show. Well, I think, again, four really interesting bottlings that, uh, that Ian has produced, and uh, they're all still available to purchase. I'm taking sort of um, orders as we speak, and uh, we'll obviously, as soon as I've got hold of the stock, obviously inform everybody. Um, the Bladnock, yep, yeah, I mean, I thought that was impressive. That was a good, good old Bladnock, as they say. Um, I've tasted tasted a lot worse shall we say and so I think you know nice nice to see a black knock it has to be said um, the Milton Duff well I think yeah obviously star of the show it has to be said I mean um, it's not to say that it's always the case you know um, there are a lot of really quite poor old whiskies out there and again uh, I was tasting some earlier this week and uh, you know one of them um, I won't say who the, the bottling company was, uh, but it really was absolutely dead. And I'm thinking, why in God's name did you bottle that? It probably, I mean, it was, you know, about the same sort of age, actually, about 30-odd. And I'm thinking, you know, that died some years ago. You really should have got shot of that. And I'm, maybe it was never that great in the first place. And this is always the issue with old whiskies. They are expensive. Uh, they are at three figures, you know, depending obviously on their, their, their age and provenance and all that kind of stuff. And, you know, like I keep saying, if I feel that comfortable selling it, I'll stick it on the shelf. If I don't, I won't, you know, pretty much as simple as that, really, at the end of the day. Um, the Glen Talkers, I like that. I, I mean, I'm not saying I liked it because I picked what the finishing cast was, uh, but I think that's really, really well balanced. And... Um, I think again, I think I'll probably opt to sort of like, you know, just drink that one neat rather than putting water with it. But uh, either way, I think that was absolutely stunning. And the Heaven Hill. Uh, yeah, again, a, a lovely bottling. And um, again, something slightly different. Uh, the, the combination of the sort of like the bourbon character with the peat just, just works really, really nicely. And, you know, it wasn't OTT. I don't think it had spent a huge amount of time in the uh, in the XR bed cask. Certainly, I would be surprised if it's if it spent longer than a year. Um, and I just thought, again, really, really well balanced. And certainly, uh, like the Glen Talkers, I would opt to have sort of uh, drink that one completely neat. Although you probably wouldn't want too many of those at, at near sixty percent. You'll sort of like uh, have, a, have a have a big glass of that and suddenly get up and realise mm, my legs are not working anymore. Um, but yeah, so so there we have it. That's. That's this week's uh, episode of the show. Yes, there was no Tobermory. Not the end of the world, like I said. Um, but uh, what I have tasted, I think, has been really, really good. And I, sh and, uh, I urge all of you that, uh, that uh, have supported Ian uh, and supported North Star Spirits and, uh, you know, to, um, to do so again. Um, because, you know, we... Uh, what would the whiskey industry be like without any independence? So anyway, there you go. That's this week's episode of the show in the bag. Next week we'll be taking a look at the regional malts, which are a lot more affordable at $39.95. And um, we'll ask the question, are they worth 40 quid or $39.95 as the case may be? Anyway, until then, uh, good drumming and um, good afternoon.